good morning impact or it's maybe it's afternoon or evening when you're watching this but hello how are you all how's um your week been i hope you've had a good week uh, so far and i hope that you're learning at home homeschooling has been going well whether that's online or if you've been going into school i just hope and pray that you are doing okay and enjoying it as much as you can and seeing some of your friends maybe your teachers online so still too and I just pray that your studies are really going well for you at the moment in this strange time. Now, this week we're carrying on with our journey through the book of Acts. And this week we are looking at Acts 14. So last week, Maddie talked to you about Paul and Barnabas and um, the journey that they went on in Acts 13 and how they were chosen. And today we're talking about the next journey that Paul and Barnabas made to some other places and I'm reading from my youth bible again just because I really like this version but you can read from any version you like and I'm going to read to you the whole of Acts 14. So let's start. In Iconium Paul and Barnabas went as usual to the Jewish synagogue. They spoke so well that a great many Jews and Greeks believed but some of the Jews who did not believe excited the non-Jewish people and turned them against the believers. Paul and Barnabas stayed in Iconium a long time and spoke bravely for the Lord. He showed that their message about his grace was true and by giving them the power to work miracles and signs. But the city was divided. Some of the people agreed with the Jews and the others believed the apostles. Some who were not Jews, some Jews and some of the rulers wanted to mistreat Paul and Barnabas and to stone them to death. When Paul and Barnabas learned about this, they ran away to Lystra and Derbe, cities in Lyconia and to the areas around those cities. They announced the good news there too. That's the good news of Jesus. In Lystra, there sat a man who had been born crippled. He'd never walked. As this man was listening to Paul speak, Paul looked straight at him and saw that he believed God could heal him. So he cried out, Stand up on your feet! The man jumped up and began walking around. When the crowd saw what Paul did, they shouted in the Lyconian language, The gods have, come to, have become like humans and have come down to us. Then the people began to call Barnabas Zeus, and Paul Hermes, because he was the main speaker. Now, Hermes means messenger. It's got nothing to do with um, the Hermes delivery, but that is why Hermes delivery is called Hermes, because it's messenger. Um, that's obviously not written in here. I just thought I'd tell you anyway. The priest in the temple of Zeus, which was near the city, brought some balls and flowers to the city gates. He and the people wanted to offer a sacrifice to Paul and Barnabas. But when the apostles, Barnabas and Paul, heard about it, they tore their clothes. They ran in among the people, shouting, Friends, why are you doing these things? We are only human beings like you. We are bringing you the good news and telling you to turn away from those worthless things and turn to the living God. He is the one who made the sky, the earth, the sea and everything in it. Hang on, I've lost my place. Oh, yeah. In the past... God let all the nations do what they wanted. Yet he proved he is real by showing kindness, by giving you rain from heaven and crops at the right times, by giving you food and filling your hearts with joy. Even with these words, they were barely able to keep the crowds from offering sacrifices to them. Then some Jewish people came from Antioch and Iconium and persuaded the people to turn against Paul. So they threw stones at him and dragged him out of town, thinking they'd killed him. But the followers gathered around him, and he got up and went back into the town. The next day, he and Barnabas went to the city of Derby. Paul and Barnabas told the good news in Derby, and many followers became many became followers. Paul and Barnabas returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, making the followers of Jesus stronger and helping them stay in the faith. They said, we must suffer many things to enter God's kingdom. 
They chose elders for each church by praying and giving up eating for a certain time, which is called fasting. Those elders had trusted the Lord, so Paul and Barnabas put them in the Lord's care. Then they went through Pisidia and came to Pamphylia. When they'd reached the message in when they'd preached the message in Perga, they went down to Attilia, and from there they sailed to Antioch, where the believers had put them into God's care and sent them out to do this work. Now they had finished. When they arrived in Antioch, Paul and Barnabas gathered the church together. They told the church all about what God had done for, with them and how God had made it possible for those who were not Jewish to believe. And they stayed there a long time with the followers. So that's today's reading. I wonder, what do you worship? Who do you worship? Do you worship the one true God? And that's who we aim to worship and who we want to worship. But worship can sometimes be about putting something in your life more important than yourself and more important than God. Do you worship the internet? Do you worship TV, social media, TikTok? I don't know. There might be something else that you guys might worship. Do you worship the church? Or do you worship God, the one true God? And that's what Paul and Barnabas encountered in this passage. In Lystra, they encountered people who um, saw what God had done through Paul and Barnabas in healing the man. But they believed that Paul and Barnabas were Greek gods. They were idols. They made them idols. And it's really important that we don't put other things in our lives above God. It can be so easy. I know that and I understand that. I think especially as young people, teenagers, it can be really hard not to put things in your life more important than God. That could be your schoolwork. It could be sleep. I tell you what, I love to sleep. And I need to make sure that I don't put that above God. Whatever it is in your life, even if it's a relationship or a boyfriend or a girlfriend, if you've got a boyfriend or a girlfriend, they should always be below God. You always should have God should be above everything else in your life. And Paul and Barnabas um, preached the good news and taught the people in Lystra that it was important not to have those false gods. And I think some of them did, did start to believe that. They started to worship the true God and not Zeus and Hermes anymore. But some of them would still have carried on worshipping Zeus and Hermes. And they faced opposition, didn't they, Paul and Barnabas? They faced people telling them... Um, unkind things and wanting to do unkind things to them for preaching who God was, for sharing the gospel. And that can happen to us as well. We might encounter people in our lives who are unkind to us or mistreat us because we believe in Jesus and worship Jesus. But it's really important that we make sure that we don't put anything in our lives above that. And we know that God has got good things planned for us even in those troubling times. And that God is with us, just like he was with Paul and Barnabas throughout this passage. We're going to say a prayer. And um, yeah, then I'll just tell you about um, what I've got planned. So, Jesus, I want to thank you that you are the one true God. Lord, I thank you that we know who you are and um, how worthy of our praise and worship you are. Lord, I want to pray that we um, don't put things above you, that you help us not to worship other things in our lives, be that um, other people, social media, our friends, our family, sleep, um, our schoolwork, or even other people within the church. Help us to remember that you are worthy of all of our praise and all of our worship, and you are our one true God. And I thank you, Lord, that you are with us wherever we go whether that's just at home at the moment and going from our bedroom to the kitchen or whether that is going to school or going all over the world. I thank you that you are with us. And even if we um, face opposition for believing in you and for loving you, you have got good things planned for us and you promise to be with us. 
Lord, I pray that you'll be with our young people this week as they go about their lives. I pray that they will know that you are close and you are with them and that you love them dearly. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I really do miss you. Um, i really like to see you guys soon, so I'm going to try and organise a Zoom call for probably for next Sunday. Um, I will send the email message out to your parents, the email link, and I'd love to be able to join you and see some of you there. And then we can chat about maybe organising a social as well. And hopefully Maddie will be able to join us on that call too. So I hope you're well, and um, I hope to speak to you guys next week. Bye-bye.